team, Ben. All right, hello and welcome back, everyone, to game two and a best of three between Mike Chan, Dota, and Rushdown Gaming. This is Sevo Season Three placement matches. Hope you guys are enjoying the casts and the games so far. Game one, maybe a bit of a stomp. See if Rushdown Gaming can put up a little bit better of a performance here. Draft a little more standard. Looked like they wanted to try something uh, a little different as they picked up that Medusa first. We'll see if they play more standard here in game two. As the band's already underway, Mike Chan Dota, they take out the Abaddon. So, don't want to play against it, and they don't want to play it this time. Uh, Dave got a couple kills on that through a couple of Photic Shields. They didn't really get to do a whole lot, but they're going to take it out. As now Rushdown taking out the Batrider, as well as the Nick. So, Batrider, of course, a hero. Lane dominant, a little bit ambiguous, can go mid, off lane, can jungle. And, of course, punishing poor positioning with that Blink Dagger that he can normally get pretty early on into the game and Nakes remaining. just a good carry throughout the rage whole game rage and infest uh, pretty versatile with both of those abilities can really make plays and extend plays and once again great at every stage in the game can go extremely late as that late game carry same thing with alchemist can really free farm with that grievous greed if you let them and then come out with big items shadow blade ac bkb 20 minutes 30 minutes depending on the rate of free farm and can have a big impact in games. Ten so taking him remaining. out is Mike Chandota as Rushdown Gaming once again the first pick. Five What's it going to be? Remaining. Are they going to try that Dusa again? No, they're going to stick a little more standard and pick a great Fire hero, the Purple eight. Wizard Darkseer. Um, really great in the lanes, Ion Shell great at all levels, Surge great for initiating, initiating, getting your teammates to safety, and of course Wall of Replica, one of the best abilities. Uh, to scale into the late game as it gets stronger as the other team gets stronger Also makes breaking high ground very difficult, but taking a look at Mike Chandota's picks We've got the visage as well as the shadow demon so shadow demon not seen a lot of play recently, but here he is He's back paired up with the visage uh, pretty good combination there, especially taking defensive I think it's hard to do any Think aggressive shadow demon can disrupt whoever gets gone on or disrupt the damage dealer for the other team and then visage is just a looming threat with his soul assumption damage so those heroes do work well together but Ten maybe not the highest remaining. burst damage um until level two or three when you get some poison Five or the soul catcher remaining. there from shadow demon soul catcher soul assumption you're not going to be having a good time if you are the target of those two abilities as we see the naga now coming out by Rushdown Gaming, likely to be a support, the role she's pretty much found herself in Radiant in these last few months of Dota 2, but could never really count it out as a carry. I think the problem with her is carry just hits her stride way too late, and there's just so many other better carries that uh, pretty much do her job better. Ten seconds remaining. As we have some of those being banned out now, uh, and already banned out actually, the Weaver taking a ban out now from Mike Chan Dota. They don't want to play against it as you normally would want to pick that Naga Siren or a Rubick or something, but they've already got their support so they take out the Weaver and of course Naga Weaver. Uh, synergize well together with the armor reduction. Anti-Mage OD taken out by Rushdown Gaming, so it looks like they don't want to have to worry about any split pushing from an anti-mage or late game potential, as that split pushing and late game potential gets picked up in the Nature's Prophet now, and Rushdown also taking out the OD, a lane dominating hero that can sort of semi-carry and carry. Don't want to play against it, don't blame him, it can be quite annoying, as Mike Chandota Maybe looking to take it aggressive as they ban out a great defensive support, the Jakiro with the Ice Path and the Dual Breath can be very annoying when trying to go aggressive. So they take him out here, Ten and I guess we'll just remaining. have to wait on some more picks to figure out what they're actually going to do here. Five seconds remaining. Reserve time. I'd just like to take this opportunity, shout out, and a big thank you to everyone in the chat. Actually seeing some action in there tonight, people talking back and forth, always nice to see. Uh, hope you guys follow Sevo Action or sign up for Sevo. Another tournament you can get involved in as well, Symphony Gaming. Check out symphonygaming.com. They're structuring their tournament a lot like the International 3 qualifiers, so it should be really sweet. Uh, head over there, Symphony Gaming. Dot com and check it out get your team signed up for both that and Sevo and of course I'm gonna try to cover both of those as well as NEL so follow on Twitch I cast just about every night um, so should be lots of fun as now we've got some more picks coming out here the good old Crystal Maiden Naga Siren and Crystal Maiden some nice guaranteed stuns into the early game Crystal Maiden though does have that problem of being slow 
and a feeding whether you're winning or not so can be tough hits your stride around the early levels level two and three when you've got crystal nova as well as frostbite uh, to really do some damage in the lane we'll see if they can get that window of really punishing the three verse three with the crystal maiden or will it just feed Dad it's not really their fault the if it does kind of how crystal maiden rolls as centaur war runner Five picked up here by maiden. mike chandota and i'm not going to spoil it i know exactly what they're going to do with the centaur war runner um, but we'll just wait and see into the uh, as the game gets going. Cool. Rush down now, looking to pick up their mid here as they go with the Queen Dive of Pain. So mid that's fallen out of favor a little bit, or maybe just can't get picked up because of heroes like OD uh, really coming Radiant into the meta King. now. Uh, but here she is. She's Queen of Pain. She does a ton of burst damage. Uh, doesn't have a lot of team fight control, say, like Puck does, as Puck taking the ban out here. Radiant Along with Gyrocopter, the two fifth round bans. Puck and Gyrocopter taken out. But we'll see what Queen of Pain can get done. Does offer a lot of burst damage. And they've got some nice stuns, as well as the sleep Naga combination to set up the um, Scream of Pain, Sonic Waves, as well as the Dark Seer Wall Vacuum. So a bit of a wombo combo here. Even the Freezing Field from Crystal Maiden, if she can find the space to get that ability off. Rushdown has a strong team fight uh, if they take it correctly with good positioning remaining. and you know, making sure they're not stacking their abilities on that sleep. But Zeus, the pickup here from Mike Chan Dota. Zeus looking to do big things here in that mid lane. We'll see what he can really do. Maybe even in the tri lane, actually. As Jigglebilly picks up the centaur, and I think I lied. I don't know what they're doing with the centaur. Or they're not doing what I wanted them to do with the centaur, so I won't spoil that for Orbit as he's developing centaur strats. Uh, but DK, the last pickup here by Rushdown Gaming, um, maybe looking to take that just probably defensive trial lane. Darkseer is a great offlaner, and with this Zeus, I think some like IXDL strats here. Some Broodstar Zeus apparently in this game, Mike Chan Dota. So, although Jigglebilly is the farmer, so Zeus is probably just going to be middle. As we get into the game. We'll just actually see what the lanes are going to be as we introduce the team. So for Mike Chandota, we've got Chicken MC, hashtag back to the streets here on the Nature's Prophet once again, looking for that 1v1 lane as he heads top. Uh, and meanwhile, in the tri lane, it's going to be a farming a Jigglebilly on the Centaur. So once again, not doing what I thought they were going to do, but maybe we'll see it from him uh, in the future. Dave, once again, supporting here on the Shadow Demon, going to be supported with by Orbit on the Visage. So we'll see what he can do there. Does like those micro-intensive heroes. Uh, switching to his support, as anyone who knows Orbit knows, he used to play mid, but of course they've picked up a very solid mid in the player Relic here on Zeus this game, going up against Quap. So that takes care of Mike Chandota on the Dire. Over to the Radiant, we've got Eric, the mid player for Rushdown Gaming, this time on the Quap, going four into the jungle right now. Uh, looks like they will discover Jigglebilly on the Sensar, but we got GGS supporting on the Naga. Tom on the Crystal Maiden as the net goes out. Some mana wasted. Nothing really to follow up there. Would have been four on three, but who has a better level one? With Soul Assumption, I'd have to say probably the Visage uh, team, which would be Mike Chandota, but who knows? Maybe still going to have a fight, but Crimson Reaper standing pretty close by still on the DK. Dave going to put himself under here. Try to run away there. No initiation to follow up on pawn that. And the last person here for rush down it's going to be castle crusher here on the offlane darkseer as grimson reaper picking up that double damage rune in the bottom going to give him a nice chance in the mid lane as quap is actually going to be the hero here in the tri lane so rush down definitely trying some new things something a little interesting uh quap definitely needs those levels and i don't really think zeus is going to have or excuse me dk is going to have a very fun time versus Zeus in the mid lane. Uh, we'll see what they can get done though with Eric down in the bottom lane, that tri lane. There is a lot of damage and not really a proper carry in this tri lane versus tri lane for either side as a Jigglebilly of course on that centaur. And we've got ourselves a pause and a lot of drawing on the map. As you do when games are paused, what else is there to do but draw on the map? Alright, so game two, and a best of three between Mike Chan, Dota, and Rushdown underway now as the creep in the lanes. I think, yeah, there they are. 
the words go out here by the dire. Uh, the standard one to get the rune as well as some vision into the jungle. As a nice ward here on the bottom side. They will actually be able to find it. Um, but no, yeah, okay. She Tom found it. Gonna run back and deward that. Uh, so one ward is down, but at least they keep the rune vision. It's just slightly out of range there on the far edge. Wow, how did they even get that ward that far out? As maybe I should watch Chicken MC's lane. I didn't think he was gonna get first blood last time, and I don't think he's gonna do it this game, but who knows? Maybe he'll prove me wrong once again. Getting a lot of harass out there onto the Darkseer, as well as getting his farm. Three last hits, Darkseer just at one. The mid lane, I think Relic, already we can see just spamming his mana like crazy. As Zeus does use Arc Lightning to last hit, his attack animation pretty garbage, I think, unless you're, you know, you're really used to it, but Arc Lightning. Does just enough damage, more than most heroes lasted for this early, so can definitely get those last hits. And spamming it up here to get his bottle quite early. Grimson Reaper almost at his, uh, actually going with a Quelling Blade. In the bottom lane though, let's see who's farming better down here. Quap, I would suspect, but we'll see it's 5 for Jigglebilly on the Centaur. Quap at 4. Jigglebilly, however, taking a lot of harass here. The Shadow Strike Poison being quite annoying. As Mike Chan, Chicken MC, throwing those TPs down just to get people thinking, hey, I can be down there, I can make this lane 4 versus 3, don't forget that. And they probably won't after last game, uh, getting a lot of kills early on into that game. As the Rune Spawns bot orbits there to scoop it up for his team, uh, it's going to be Illusion, or at least secure it for Zeus, as Relic is going to need to refill that bottle. Camp was dewarded, so now looking to... Uh, Pull this, they've already stacked it, trying to get those levels up on the Naga. You do want level 6, or at least a couple levels, so you can get some damage off that Riptide. Although the armor reduction from Riptide, not going to matter a whole lot in this lane. It's not like a Weaver with a Geminid attack. Most of these heroes are going to be primarily magic damage right now in the early game. DK, 12 last hits, using his... Uh, Dragon Breath here to get those, or Breathe Fire to get last hits as well, it looks like. And also maybe Harass Relic, so doing pretty good in this lane. Uh, better than I would have expected. Dragon Blood, probably enough regen to deal with the Arc Lightning, but now that there's points in the Lightning Bolt, and of course Crystal Maiden, uh, we'll go down in the First Blood here in the bottom lane. I don't normally miss First Bloods, but when I do, there's actually people watching the stream. As Jiggle Billy getting pretty low, GGS, maybe gonna pick it up, but no, throws out the stun. There's enough damage for another Soul Assumption, it's fully charged now at level 1, no, waiting for a couple more. Mike Chan still debating on whether to come in or not, does throw the Soul Assumption, GGS, pretty low and able to get away. Maybe could have thrown that a little earlier, uh, but not quite decided on it, but it looks like the kills down there go 1 for 1, slightly favoring Mike Chan Dota as it was the first blood for them, so definitely going a lot better already here in game two for them. Uh, making a nice trade there, getting the first blood. Chicken MC though did not leave the lane, looks like Darkseer did, did uh, go down there to join up, thought Chicken MC was going to leave, never did, so this gives him once again some more free farm, 15 last hits right now, mid lane though there's a gang, Crimson Reaper in trouble, Jigglebilly, the carry in that lane, rolls over with Dave. Uh, picking up that kill in the mid lane on the Dragonite. He will drop, making it 2-1 now. At the 4 minute mark, Room gonna spawn. Top, gonna be that double damage. Orbit heading back down to the bottom lane. Uh, looking to disrupt the farming of Eric here at 9 CS. Centaur though, with the death. I believe he's the one who went down. No, that was Orbit, excuse me. Uh, still leading the charts. 12-12, uh, and 12, tied now in the CS in this bottom lane. As Relic, once again, Room control on his side. Especially when your mid opponent is dead. Pretty easy to do it, but here comes a wraparound on the backside. Jiggle Billy as well as Dave Orbit kind of throwing the bait. They're going to come around on the CM as she's the obvious target here. She gets put under. Jiggle Billy throws out the stun. And now going to run to safety is Dave. Can they get Eric? No. Blink is online. GS throws out the net, but pays the price with his life. The Soul Assumption was still built up on Orbit. He lets it fly, and it's going to hit GGS in the face as he does take a death here. Now 4-1 for Mike Chandota. Now the game's suddenly not looking quite as good for Rushdown, but the gold graphs, 2,000 advantage for Mike Chandota right now. XP at about 500, so slightly, pretty decent lead right now in gold. XP, though, not a whole lot at the moment, maybe like half a level somewhere. Although Relic, once again, dominating the last hits in this game. Not a lot of farming going on elsewhere. Uh, Chicken MC is doing his best he can versus the Darkseer here, which... 
to be honest, I feel like with a few levels, Darkseer really should win this lane. I mean, you can just run at the Nature's Prophet, throw the vacuum to stop the TP or to destroy the trees and the sprout, and just kill that Nature's Prophet. Um, but maybe weary of TP support or just, I don't know, flashbacks from last game. We'll see. But Mike Chan so far doing really well. Uh, Castle Crasher could probably be creep skipping this. He does have the Stout Shield and already up to the Soul Ring. But let's check it out. Jigabilly could be in trouble. Three down here. Uh, only backed up by Orbit at the moment. But no, they're not going to have a go. They're kind of scared. They've fallen behind a little in this lane. Uh, as we check out the levels, Centaur up at four. Looks like Eric's leading it. I think he was left alone for a little while. Uh, hitting level five now. But we can see Naga as well as Crystal Maiden level two and three. So support's taking a bit of a hit. Over to the mid lane though. Zeus picks up a kill with his ultimate onto Dragonite. Will go down right behind the tier one tower. Dave was over here as well, roaming around. We'll get netted up. Here comes Relic, still looking to do some damage. Gonna throw it on Crystal Maiden, takes him out. GGS now having to retreat. And Dave gonna get out of this with about 150 HP. And that's a double kill for Relic. Top farmer, 31 last hits, and a double kill. And back to the streets, takes a kill out behind the bottom tier one. Looks like he will maybe fall to it. No, we'll be able to get the tower off of him as he heads back to the base. Radiance Middle Tower is under attack. Able to TP out of that one. Seven and one, so being very active right now. A little too active for me in my uh, slightly sick headache mood. Missing some kills here in this game. As I think I see Orbit trying to draw on the minimap as Relic once again, the next rune. Every single rune besides the zero minute rune going Relic's way uh, in this game here. Eric, though, still trying to get some last hits up, still trying to make an impact. Doesn't have a bottle, so can't really spam his spells a whole lot. Still holding on to a salve and some regen. We see him at 20 last hits, so about the middle of the pack right now. Uh, leading, of course, is Relic. Taking a little bit of harass there from the Breathe Fire level 4. It does do quite a bit of damage, but Relic with that regen rune. Uh, gonna just go ahead and regen back up. Dave blocking the camps once again. GGS doesn't have the sentry. Uh, now can't really get levels here as he's just sitting at level 2. So these supports... Um, for lack of a better term, kind of getting screwed over here in this tri lane as they go and block the camp again. Dave, to start off the initiation here, does take a Crystal Nova to the face. Eric able to TP out in time. Now Jigglebilly caught in the net, but Chicken MC comes in. The ultimate from Relic picks up the double kill, actually. The Soul Assumption was there as well for a bit of damage. Now GG's going down. Relic triple kill. TP's down. Ultimate and a Lightning Bolt to pick up that triple kill. Chicken MC was there as well on the Nature's Prophet. So getting it done. 10 and 1. Large advantage now game. Potentially looking pretty grim for Rush. Let's check out their Darkseer's progress. He's going actually a cloak here, so not an item you want to see your Darkseer with early. Uh, maybe opting to rush a pipe here over the mech. Uh, I guess that's debatable. I mean, there is a lot of magic on this team, but mech may be a little bit more useful as we see another kill there in the bottom lane. Jiggle Billy going to double edge that one. Tired of letting these kills get away from him. Brings him to 2 0 and 4. As Grimson Reaper actually does pick up that haste rune in the middle lane. Uh, still holding on pretty well in the CS. He's up to 33. Uh, so not doing too bad, but the three top farmed heroes right now are for Mike Chan Dota. 43 on the Prophet, 41 on the Zeus, and 36 on the Centaur as Dave. Going to smoke up. Looking for Grimson Reaver. Does have a haste rune though. Could be a hard gank, and he's aware of this. So he's in, on the wards, or no, don't, they don't have wards, but he suspects it and will back off. He's got Elder Dragon form, but... Really not able to push. No one's leaving the lane for a lot, and if they need to go fight somewhere, he pretty much has to be there. But now that I say that, I really don't think he has been. Uh, getting ganked mid pretty heavily throughout this game. Not really able to TP and help out this bottom lane, although he has one now. Hey, thanks. Let's see what Jiggle Billy's going for. He's got Tranquil Boots, which is pretty standard here, so you can double edge and heal back up. Uh, now Eric having a go here on the Queen of Pain. Gonna do a bit of damage orbit. Will take a net. Uh, Soul Assumption ready to fly. That gets GGS pretty low. Here comes Mike Chantoto. Immediately frosted up with the ultimate from Relic. Immediately enough damage to take out two. Orbit picks up the double kill there. Relic got one as well. He's unstoppable at the moment. Uh, that's going to be 6 and 0 oh right now on the Zeus in the mid lane. Castle Crasher has TP down, has some wards. Jiggle Billy maybe trying to get that courier. He spotted it. Trying to get that bird in his claws there, to quote Night Stalker, who not making an appearance in game two, but was in game one. Familiar's now online for Orbit after that double kill. They will spot out Castle Crasher. He's locked in here. He drops the wall. Jigabilly could potentially go down, might go down. 
Uh, can Crash with Crash or get out of here? No, he cannot. Relic, wicked sick now, 7-0, oh, rotating down. Gonna bail out Jigglebilly as he was pretty far down, and it looks like the TPs, either not enough money for TPs or on cooldown, no one was able to TP back. Yeah, no one has any money right now. Crystal Maiden 0 and 5, Quap 0 and 4, GGS 0 and 3. They've died so many times, no money for TPs. Relic now getting a little ballsy. Doesn't want to take his first death. He'll give up a lot of money, and it looks like Crimson uh, will take out Chicken MC here in the top lane, but more action in the bottom lane as Crystal Maiden now in some trouble. Relic can sit back. 15 seconds will have that ultimate, but it looks like Orbit, I hear those familiars crash. Looks like they pick up that kill on Crystal Maiden. One does, however, drop to either the tower or Quap. And yeah, still looking to do work. I think the ultimate is online in five seconds for the Zeus right now. They're gonna get the tier one tower. They find the Queen of Pain relic. Did find it. Doesn't have mana for his ult right now. Trying to juke behind these trees. It looks like Dave gonna pick that one up with Shadow Poison and Soul Catcher. Queen of Pain taking another death right now. And if we just look at the uh, the death, the kill, the KDA chart, as we shall call it, we can see Relic there at 8 and 0 right now. Orbit 5 and 1. Jigobilly 2 and 0. Dave 1 and 0. And Chicken MC 1 1 and 7. So a lot of assists there. Uh, some really strong alts here between the Zeus as well as the Nature's Prophet globally, especially now that the team finds themselves so far behind. Jigobilly picks up another one for three kills there, uh, taking out the Darkseer. And yeah, so all five Dire teammates well ahead in that chart as you would expect, and the net worth as well. The support's a little under the DK and the Darkseer, but as you can see, game going very well for Mike Chandota. If the score 19 to 2 wasn't enough of an indication, we have graphs as well, but Relic could be in trouble. Three heroes on him right now. Will he go down? He does get his ultimate off. He's gonna drop the third death right now for Mike Chandota. Chicken MC came in as well, trying to get Crimson Reaper. If he doesn't miss uphill, he might just be able to do that. Here comes, uh, oh, it's enough. He's gonna get that kill. Now just TPing out immediately. The burst damage isn't there. And I say burst damage isn't there, and there's a Quap and a Crystal Maiden that's level 5 and level 7, with no mana, no health, pretty far behind. Nature's Prophet going to be able to TP out of that and get away, as now they got the bottom tier 1 tower down, heading back to the mid lane to try to get it. Actually, no, Chicken MC diving the base right now, trying to get the Quap. Uh, not going to be able to do it. The net's there. He's got to wait for it, otherwise he can't TP. Trying to get Tom, though. Will get Tom. He's going to spawn the trees. Uh, not going to be able to TP out of this one, but... You're killing people in their base at 13 minutes at the fountain. Uh, I think it's maybe worth the death. He does give up a bit. It's kind of reckless, but I don't know. You only live once, I guess. Meanwhile, the aggression, though, not stopping Relic with the DD. Looking to get another kill on GGS. He goes down. That's his sixth death right now. Relic on just a warpath. Not going to go godlike, though, as he did take a death. He's 9-1 right now. As Jigglebilly diving to tier 1 by himself. Frostbite, still a good spell. Doesn't really matter. It looks like he went armlet. So he does armlet toggle once. But now everyone diving behind the tower. Orbit going to pick up that kill. Going to get stunned up. He's out of mana anyways. Chicken MC focusing the DK. But he's still holding on to Tango's or Quelling Blade. Relic, meanwhile, picking up the Darkseer. Double damage still online for him. As he actually maxes Arc Lightning and Lightning Bolt instead of Static Field, which is interesting, but maybe makes sense this game. Uh, no one on the other team really has a lot of health at the moment. As he is netted up by the tower, but let's see. One more Arc Lightning is going to do the trick. GGS goes down yet again. Now Grimson Reaper in trouble. He's got some teammates, but where are they? Still sitting in the fountain right now. Chicken MC to drop. Picks up a double kill here. Soul Catcher by Dave. Is it going to be enough damage? Jigglebilly will make sure there's enough. Going to come around the backside with the double edge and take him out. Meanwhile, Orbit, maybe being the only reasonable player on his team, um, actually pushing the tower instead of just diving, bringing the score 28-7 to now. Everyone for Mike Chandota, pretty low, and uh, probably need to get out of here before they end up being too overaggressive and uh, giving the game back over to Rushdown. But let's check the graphs. Let's see where it's at. Could be... It's a tall order, actually, even giving the game back as 13,000, 14,000 XP lead, Jigobilly to drop, and 11,000 XP, so a lot. Orbit, though, could be going down. Soul Assumption online throws it out. Here come the familiars. This is going to be the death of GGS. Castle Crashers and once Orbit. Orbit trying to get out of there. Can't really TP. The Vacuum's online. Blank Chandota, though, trying to save the day. Throws the alt. Going to get the Sprout as well. Vacuum goes. Orbit now in trouble. Although Castle Crasher picks the wrong tree. Is going around the backside. Gets it anyways. And now able to escape from Chicken MC. So he gets to kill 2 and 3 right now, Castle, Crush Castle Crasher. The team on his back. 
apparently. Um, leading the charts, I believe, Radiance for the KDA. No. Nope. Looks like Eric found himself four kills in those uh, engagements. Ever been cause for celebration? I see some questions in the chat. Can anyone sign up for SIVA or what? Yes, it's free to sign up. Um, there is a main division, which is for more experienced teams. The 16 teams that qualified for the SIVO Season 2 playoffs have made it into main. And these are the placement matches to see if you deserve to be in main as well. Uh, as we see here, Mike Chandota probably deserves to be in main. Uh, but they're a pretty top quality team, so I don't want to say Rushdown doesn't either. Uh, I mean, even pro teams get stomped, so I don't want to judge them off of one game. But uh, if Open is more suited for you, then of course that registration is open. It's free to enter. There's Dota 2. There's about every flavor of Counter-Strike you can imagine, as well as some other games. So make sure to check that out as Mike Chan Dota continuing to just find kills here. Yet another one. GGS. Going for the Milk Award this game, maybe. Uh, Owen 9 the whole team may be going for the Milk Award, uh, as they're falling pretty far behind here. We already checked the graphs a little while ago. 16 minutes and 30 seconds, and it's 33 to 9, looking to push down the towers, but gotta respect Rushdown. They're not just going to forfeit this game, they're going to uh, stick into it. Uh, they do have some high ground defense heroes in that Darkseer, and the Co-op as well, so maybe they get something done, but Relic... Going to be pretty strong now as he picks up that Ag's first build on the Zeus. Got to be uh, pretty happy about that when you're playing Zeus. Jiggle Billy, again, just being a tank, has that armlet looking to really just tank things up here. Uh, does Not able to toggle. Nice wall from Castle Crasher. Will take him down. And now Chicken is going to have to run through it as well on the way back. And that might be enough to get him. The Illusion's going to chase. The Naga Illusion's going as well. Want to get that Riptide off. Now Grimson Reaper trying to just kill Relic. It's not going to be enough. The Riptide! No? Why? Alright, questionable plays, but we'll move on. Uh, probably had him there if he just threw the Riptide and it was off cooldown, I believe so. But uh, either way, let's just check out the net worth tab to reinforce the graphs. We see the top three here for the Dire in the lead at 7.2 on a Zeus, 6.4 on a Prophet, 5.6 on the Centaur Warrunner. Finally, the most farmed hero with 55 last hits and a couple kills, 3 and 5. He's sitting at 3.8k on a DK, that's Grimson Reaper, so doing well for his team. Finally, we find the two supports for Mike Chandota, and then the everyone else. The other core, as well as the offlaner and supports. Below that, the bottom four slots on the net worth just pretty much shows you why the graph's at 15,000 and the XP at 12. If we check the levels, Crystal Maiden does have her alt if she skilled it, but I would assume not. You don't normally get it at level 6, especially if it's this delayed of a 6. As Zeus just going to kill everybody. Now in the mid lane, Crimson Reaper in trouble as well. Soulcatcher goes out. Jingle Billy has the double edge. I believe he used it twice there, gonna go off, gonna take out the highest net worth hero for the Radiance, so another good pick off for them, 36 and 10, and Chicken MC with the Nature's Wrath, nope, dive into the Fountain once again, I'm gonna pick off both of them, Crystal Maiden and the Quap both were solo, TPing to the Fountain doorstep, taking them both out there for a triple kill on Chicken MC this game, and now looking to finally push down this tier 2 tower. As Jiggle Billy is like, uh, I want to shop. I've got 2,000 gold. I can do that at the enemy base, right? Or I'll just feed, but we'll see what he buys up here. Looking to buy something, or just run around. Chicken MC coming in to help out. Gonna just sprout him in there. Cage match with an Ion Shell Darkseer. Not always a fun time, uh, but Chicken MC does have the Lothars able to get out of there. And if we do a quick item check, like uh, Orbit, Medallion, Mana Boots, tower. Relic's got that Ags Mana Boots, Urn, Phase Boots up on the on Dave, Midas, Lothar's going towards an Orca now, Dave's going to try to save him, but maybe just going to kill him right onto the wall, Castle Crashers lays it down, but now they don't have it for the high ground defense, Naga throws the sleep, trying to reset the fight here, uh, maybe get in better Radiant's positioning and take the fight, I believe Sonic Wave was check. already used, they still got the Scream of Pain, can they chase anyone, Zeus pretty tanky actually, as well as the Visage, uh, even David at over a thousand HP right now, but Radiant's probably the only target they can get. Looks like they're maybe going to go Has for him. Dragon Sail, the range is increased here. Oh, they fixed it! It actually ex shows the extended range now uh, when you go into Elder Radiant's Dragon form, which is nice. Relic still attack. looking to go for some kills, even on the DK, who is quite tanky. 1500 health, 20 armor, although Lightning Bolts don't really care about armor. And... Uh, Mike Chandota not yet going for a Roche. I'm sure they could take it with the Nature's Prophet and the Treants, but just looking to continue diving here and getting some kills up. Radiant's top tower is under attack. And looks like they are going for the Roche here. It was a little distracted trying to read the stream chat. 
It's not every day people uh, type in my stream, but it would appear Radiant's top tower is under attack. Gotta love it when it happens here, as they do go for the Roche. Uh, not even gonna suspect it properly, as Chicken MC is in the bot lane, showing himself, pushing out the wave with the Treants. All four heroes, all five heroes down here now for Rushdown. Um, so far, they're interesting strats in game one and in game two. Um, although a lot of familiar tier one heroes in game two. Not paying off so far, it looks like. Yeah, they're aware. She dies to the Treants. Got low enough. The Ag's alt goes off from Relic on the Zeus here. Level 14 with an Ag's. Uh, gonna pick up the Aegis actually as well. Has the Blink Dagger to uh, complement the Aegis. To be completely crazy there with that Blink Dagger that he's gonna pick up soon off the Courier. Those portal wards really are awesome. Radiance courier has oh, which probably... Oh, I don't think I get him in broadcaster slot. For a peaceable beast. Oh, I'm not even going to turn Radiance on GLaDOS. It'll just distract me. Chicken MC, once again, though, Let being really aggressive, goes down while I'm just trying to get a GLaDOS announcer. Alright, we're going to do it anyways. GLaDOS is on. Uh, Dave and Orbit, the two supports. Whoa. God, Relic, stop killing people. Two supports pushing towers like the rest of the team should be. Freezing field being used up here by Tom Relic, though, looking for a double kill, maybe going for triple kill. Relic here getting kind of low, but not really. Still 600 HP. The burst damage coming out. Relic doesn't have that refresher yet, but at this rate, not too far off. He has the wand, gonna be forced to use it. Drops the Aegis right now. Tier 2 tower will go down. The support's gonna grab it right now, and this GLaDOS announcer kind of bugging me, actually. Uh, but now the team grouping up to push. Jigabilly always seems to be quite low. Uh, does have the armlet, maybe just looking to bait the team, uh, or bait the enemy team into going on him, and then toggle it up. Uh, we'll see. The alt stampede is on cooldown right now. The sleep goes out from GGS, though. Castle Crasher looking for a nice position to wall. Chicken MC's not here. Throws out his nature's wrath. Here comes the wall. Can they get the vacuum? Nice! Disruption there by Dave Vacuum, though. Still gonna come out, get three. Goes on to a killing spree, but gonna drop Chicken MC TPs on the back lines. Uh, Relic, though, godlike double kill. I didn't even see the team die. They died so fast. Uh, the Ags, the Ags ultimate does work. Especially when you're this far ahead. 46-14 here. Tier 3 tower now getting pushed. Chicken MC once again wanting to dive into the fountain here. Even the G1... Hexy the Hexapus, or whatever his name is, gonna go down there as well. Chicken MC just being one of those really, really annoying Nature's Prophets as the Tier 3 Tower looking to go down here in Game 2. Nice! Blink initiate here by Jigglebilly, picks it up, gonna pick off two more as they spawn. Orchid of Malevolence up on Chicken MC as well, still camping the fountain here. Unfortunately, there's no tournament items for Sivo yet, that is. Tell him you want them. Uh, because if there were, Mike Chandota trying to farm up those items right now. Relic Beyond God, like, double kill once again. Orbit, though, just wanted to get this game over with. Uh, the voice of reason on his team, it seems. Trying to just push down this Rax by himself with his familiars. Alright, so after seeing this match, and I probably would have suspected it anyways, as I know... Uh, the players for Mike Chan's Dota. I would expect them to be the group favorites. Uh, if not, the Sevo placement matches favorites. Although there are quite a few top-notch teams in the placement matches. So uh, looking for a fun playoffs and the placement matches. And then an even better Sevo Season 3 main. And if you want to check that out, all the information for the groups and for Sevo Season 3 placement and main and open. That's all on Sevo.com, so check it out. And if that's not enough of a tournament for you or enough tournaments for you in North America, check out symphonygaming.com. Go get registered there and sign up. Uh, they've got a sick tournament going on. And of course, I'm going to be casting it all. So make sure to follow on twitch.tv slash Dota. Mike Chandota taking it 2-0. and Looking to go far here in the Sevo Season 3 placements, as well as Sevo Season 3. So thank you for watching, everybody. Um, Maybe we'll cast another one a little later tonight if I find some NEL games that don't have any casters or anything like that. Uh, but here's the score screen. Hope you guys enjoyed, and I'll see you all around.